Hello and welcome to this overview of F107, Planning, Programming, Budgeting, and Execution. This is the final block of instruction for the F100 course. This is an abbreviated or light version of this overview. This slide introduces the end state of PPBE, that is, the Completed Future Years Defense Program, or FIDAP. This cube represents the appropriations and corresponding major force programs along with the services and agencies that are competing for money. Shown here are the five basic appropriations or colors of money. Operations and maintenance, military personnel, procurement, research development, testing and evaluation, and military construction. The FIDAP consists of the prior year, current year, budget year, and four program years. The DOD PPBE process serves as its primary resource management system in support of combatant commanders. The Assistant Secretary of the Army, Financial Management, and Comptroller manages the PPBE process for the Army, with the help of the G357, the G8's Director Program Analysis and Evaluation, and the Military Budget, the Military Deputy for Budget and Execution. This slide shows the PPBE process chronologically. The point of this slide is to show how the PPBE process relates to Total Army Analysis, or TAA. Notice that the Program Objective Memorandum, or POM build for 23 to 27, starts immediately following TAA. Once the program is complete, the budgeting phase begins with development of the Budget Estimate Submission, or BESS. Notice that while the POM 24 to 28 build is occurring, the FY22 budget is being executed and the FY23 budget is being debated by Congress. The red line on the slide roughly indicates the current time, or date. You've seen this before, now let's think about it, about it again. This slide illustrates some of the basic planning inputs used to develop the Army's program. This is essentially the first P of PPBE. You are familiar with TAA. A key PPBE planning product is an Army force structure that supports the national military uh, strategy. TAA decisions are announced in the RSTRUC and provide the baseline force structure used in building the initial POM. Our second P, programming, is about translating guidance and objectives into combat capability. The PPBE process is iterative. Looking at any current year, we see that DOD is both executing the budget, developing the next fiscal year budget, looking ahead at the four remaining years uh, program, and conducting long-range planning in support of DOD's planning efforts. The FIDEP officially summarizes forces and resources for programs developed within the DOD PPBE process and approved by the SECDEF. The five-year POM submission consists of the BESS and the POM and may be simply referred to as the POM BESS. Program evaluation groups, or PEGs, support all phases of PPBE with special emphasis on POM BESS building. The PEGs mirror the Title X responsibilities of the Secretary of the Army. Assistant Secretaries of the Army, along with Army staff members, are PEG co-chairs for oversight, while ACOM commanders are designated advisors. All Army resources are accounted for by and within the PEGs in groupings called Management Decision Execution Packages, or MDEPs. This slide shows an example of an MDEP for multiple launch rocket systems. MDEPs are composed 
of army program elements, or apes, corresponding to multiple appropriations. Apes can contain multiple appropriations, but it is not common for this to happen. The MDEP specifies the military and civilian manpower and dollars associated with the program. MDEPs are an army-developed management structure. It is not a DOD tool. Collectively, MDEPs account for all Army resources. They describe the capabilities programmed over a multi-year period for the active Army, Guard, Reserve, and civilian workforce. An individual MDEP describes a particular organization, program, or function, and applies uniquely to a resource management area. APES can become program elements that permit cross-service analysis by OSD and congressional staff members. Let's look at how four MDEP APES from the last slide become program elements and are binned within the DOD FIDEP. The top of the cube shows the Army-specific program elements, or PEs. Each of these is aligned and color-coded to the appropriation from which they are funded as shown on the right side of the cube. Each PE is followed by a number, which corresponds to the 12 major force programs on the front of the cube. The major force programs are also colored to match their assigned PEs. For example, the MLRS HIMARS PE is for product improvement, so it is associated with R&D. The net training PE happens to coincide with National Guard units, which is why it is binned in MFP number 5, and the acquisition support to the program manager deals with basic supplies and maintenance, so it uses O&M funding and is binned in MFP number 7. The purpose of this is to demystify the cube which represents uh, DOD's FIDEP. This slide simplifies the Palm BES submission and review process. Once complete, the Palm BES is submitted to OSD for review. The Palm is reviewed by the OSD Cost Analysis and Program Evaluation, or CAPE, to ensure that it complies with defense planning guidance and accounts for congressionally directed changes and late-breaking significant events. The chairman addresses the program to ensure it meets the needs of the combat commanders. The BES is reviewed by the Under Secretary of Defense, Comptroller, to ensure programs are funded in accordance with current fiscal guidance and provide the proper level of justification to Congress. The OMB ensures that programs are properly costed, that is, they check the math. If issues arise, Headquarters DA principal officials get with their counterparts to resolve the issues at the lowest levels. Remaining changes are published in decision memoranda, such as program decision memorandums and program budget decisions. Following these issues, the senior leadership of the Army may select major budget, budget issues, or MBIs, to discuss with the SECDEF. An MBI addresses the adverse impact that would occur if a decrement were to prevail. At the end of the process, the Secretary of the Army and Chief of Staff of the Army meet with the SECDEF and the Deputy SECDEF about MBIs. After the meeting, the SECDEF decides each issue and, if necessary, meets with OMB or the President to request additional funds or recommend other action. Following the SECDEF's final decision, Changes are made to each service's Palm BES and the DOD budget is submitted to OMB for incorporation into the President's budget. This is a pictorial representation of the annual budget process. Usually in early February, the President delivers his annual budget request for the upcoming fiscal year, which begins in October, to Congress. During budget justification, the Army presents and defends its portion of the President's budget before Congress. The Senate Armed Services Committee and the House Armed Services Committee hold authorization hearings for various programs and appropriations. Concurrently, 
the Army's budget request goes before the House and Senate Appropriations Defense Subcommittees. Once its hearings are done, each committee will mark up its bill and report out the legislation for consideration on the floor. The full House and Senate will consider amendments and vote to adopt its version of the legislation. After the House and Senate have adopted their own bills, the bills go to a conference committee consisting of members of both Houses of Congress to reconcile differences. Each House of Congress then votes to adopt the conference committee's report before the legislation can be submitted to the President for signature. Authorization bills provide program authority to establish or continue a federal program or agency and set forth guidelines to which it must adhere. Appropriation bills provide the legal authority needed to spend or obligate U.S. Treasury funds. Budget justification ends when the President signs the authorization and appropriation bills for the coming fiscal year. When enacted into law, Army appropriations provide the legal authority to incur obligations and make payments. When appropriation bills are not signed into law before 1 October, Congress may pass a continuing resolution that allows government operations to continue in the absence of appropriations. A temporary measure, the CR, usually restricts funding to the prior year level and prohibits new initiatives. This is typically based on the previous year's appropri appropriation. CRs restrict DOD's ability to initiate new production items, increase production rates, or execute any new starts, which prohibit funding new activities and projects for which appropriations, amounts, and other uh, authority were not available in the prior fiscal year. This slide discusses the Army resource management system. After an Appropriations Act is passed, several events must occur before execution in a fiscal year. OMB must apportion the appropriations which provide which provides obligation slash budget authority. An appropriation distributes funds by making specific amounts available for obligation. Classified programs may be compartmentalized for security reasons using specific funding procedures. The Treasury must issue a Treasury warrant providing the funds. The DOD Comptroller must provide program release authority. The ASA FMNC allocates apportioned funds to commands using the General Fund Enterprise Business System, or GFIBS. Commands, in turn, make funds available to subordinate commands, elements, and installations by allotment. Installations obligate funds as orders are placed and contracts awarded. They authorize payments as materiel is delivered or as services are performed. Reprogramming applies to funds uh, moved from one project to another within the same appropriation or transfers of funds from one appropriation to another to resolve financial shortfalls or to adjust programs to meet unforeseen requirements. The process is subject to designated dollar thresholds and congressional requirements for advanced approval or notification. No transfers or shifts between appropriations are allowed without prior consent of Congress. There are many, many rules that apply to the transfer of funds within or between appropriations. Moving funds within an appropriation, for example, rdt and &E, is referred to as a realignment. Take note that each appropriation has a shelf life measured in years. For example, MILCON funds are good for five years. So this has been a quick overview of F-107. Please make sure that you review these five key takeaways regarding PPBE. See you in class!